on the on the hardware side, I saw was it yesterday. I saw this or this morning. I can't remember now, but I saw. I think it's Bitmain adding uh, liquid cooling to some of the miners, or they're looking to add liquid cooling or something like that. Which I thought was kind of interesting to see how um, that's adapting and changing right now. I guess there's a lot of buzz actually in the mining world because I keep seeing things about different companies investing in. Like I saw something about a Thai company investing in 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 in, in mining companies and. Obviously, um, there's interest from Texas. It seems like a, quite a hot industry. Um, even things like, did you see um, on Jordan Peterson's podcast, uh, Safe Dean? And, and, and the one thing that Jordan Peterson seemed the most interested in was mining. Because um, he was like, well, actually, I can understand how it's like a, a way to transfer, to sort of essentially get uh, otherwise wasted energy uh, and, and monetize it. And so he was really excited about that aspect, which I was quite impressed about. Um, so there's a lot going on, uh, that's for sure. Uh, I expect you're probably pretty busy. I guess a question I should have asked you at the beginning of the podcast that I did not ask you um, that I'm interested in is, I guess, uh, for you, in your role as uh, doing BD at um, a mining company, what does that look like? Because um, I can't, like, I'm trying to think what all the different things you could be doing. But obviously, let me know, like, what, what, what do you do? What does your job look like? Yeah, for sure. Um, where to start? So uh, a lot of it is, you know, I speak to a lot of miners on uh, a daily basis, figuring out what it is they want, what it is they need in terms of their, you know, firmware, the software that runs on these devices, because we make Brains OS Plus, which is a software that makes these machines mine more efficiently, more profitably, you know, what features they could possibly need. Um, so I'm in conversation with some miners, which has led to multiple features being added to uh, some of our products, which make them more attractive. So for example, the ERCOT system in Texas, which has the load balancing program to where you have to sometimes shut off miners very quickly and turn them back on throughout the day as different parts of the grid have more or less demand for energy. Um, this encouraged us to put like the quick start and pause feature into it so that people could actually operate within the parameters of this ERCOT program, which the stock uh, software from the manufacturers didn't necessarily let them do. So a lot of it's just like, market feedback and like allowing us to build better, more desirable products. Um, there's of course the, like the sales aspect to it of like doing things to bring over as much hash rate as possible to all your products, which is the name of the game in this industry, like increasing the hash rate under management. Um, uh, keeping for me personally, a lot of what I have to do is like try to build like long-term uh, uh, business relationships. So not necessarily everything short-term is like, hey, you have hash rate. I want your hash rate, bring it over to us, but more so finding where um, we could add value to various mining companies, which would then uh, solidify a relationship with them. We provide something that they need for their operations to go smoothly and profitably. And in exchange, you know, we scale up with them. Um, and there's all sorts of things. I mean, there's a couple irons in the fire I'm not actually allowed to talk about, but uh, most of it comes down to, um, you know, building better services and products for miners sharing information and, um, you know, public appearances. I'm doing uh, like presentations and stuff like Bitcoin 2021, uh, probably Bitcoin 2022. Uh, so all the various conferences around the world that are mining focused or like high profile Bitcoin ones. Um, a lot of stuff on podcasts like this one. Um, so that refill uh, the uh, like Tales from the Crypt, Marty Bent stuff. Um, crypto mining tool, there's been a whole list. Um, Max Kaiser's podcast, I did it with Jan. So also like making sure that everything basically that's growth focused, like growing the brand, uh, growing the revenue, um, setting up the revenue models for the new products, like the pricing scheme for Brains OS and things like that. So it really stretches into a bunch of stuff, having to work with the product team, to deliver some of that market feedback between the miners that I mentioned before, having to work a lot with the marketing team for stuff like this, as well as these presentations um, that I mentioned before, um, working with some consulting team um, to connect them with the right people. Really, there's uh, you get pulled in every direction where you're needed. Yeah, okay. Edward. Um, Sometime last year, um, Salo launched the uh, Bitcoin Mining Council, and I was going through their website, and I noticed that um, you guys are not in there. And you know, if you due to the uh, you know, uh, if you are probably not sure if you were then doing Segway two X and all that hard fork, you know, um, uh, crisis, 
And it, it left, you know, South East in the mouth of, you know, Bitcoiners and made them very wary about people in suits, like people like Michael Saylor and the likes of them, institutional, you know, people who, who they think are here to co-op Bitcoin. And what are your thoughts about the Bitcoin Mining Council? Are you guys part of it? Because I cannot see you guys in the, you know, list of partners on the website. So what's, what do you have to say? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have particularly strong thoughts or opinions on the Bitcoin Mining Council. Um, I kind of remember watching it all unfold. I think it was back in May of last year, right? It was when it first came out. Um, I think it was in Mexico at the time. And seeing like this huge reaction you 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 just mentioned of um, you know a lot of people saying this would be very good for the industry because of all the things like data disclosures for energy mixes and things like that, and then having a a uh, strong interest group to lobby for the interests of Bitcoin miners in America, the United States. And then you have a lot of people on the other side saying it was not such a good thing for some of the reasons you mentioned. You know historical events of people coming together behind closed doors, uh, like the, the block size wars, um, Segwit 2X, and saying that this is a, just a form of centralization. Um, these This organization could potentially get enough influence to force other large miners to join it into the, until there's a point where like all the North American miners are in it and it can then thus exert some level of undue influence over them. Um, Uh, as far as why we're not a part of it, it's just one, you know, we don't really have huge mining operations ourselves. We're focused on the pool and the software that runs on the devices. You know, it's not like we have warehouses full of devices that make us a huge miner. So, um, and a large, a large reason to create this was to disclose energy mix and to fight this huge energy FUD you constantly see about Bitcoin mining. And as a pool provider and operator, you know, we don't actually consume <laughs> that much electricity. It's a very, very minuscule amount, you know, just like the servers that are kind of scattered across the globe that take in some of this hash rate, which there really aren't that many. There's I don't know, like 20 or 30. Um, so our, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure there are individuals with a couple of yachts or something that produce more emissions than, than our entire company does. Um, so uh, there's that. And I mean, it, speaking perfectly honestly, and this will probably frustrate some people in the Bitcoin Mining Council that I know and have personal relationships with, it just what I mean, it wasn't on our radar. We we didn't even think it wasn't like a strategy move. We didn't even think about it all. It's like, oh, that's a thing now. That's interesting to see everyone react to it. Uh, let's carry on developing our software. Uh, it wasn't really something um, that we put a lot of thought into. Just to be completely honest. Blockstream has like a mining certificate. It's like a financial instrument that's backed by mining. Um, what's your opinion on that? And do you think we'll see like a lot more uh, of that in the future? I think we will see more instruments like this in the future. I'll start there. Um, it's it's a easier entry point for certain organizations or institutions that maybe are used to, let's call it traditional finance. Um, and it's, I think, some of the early forms of uh, what we'll begin to see maybe in the next couple of years in terms of uh, hash rate based financial instruments. This is just like a very straightforward contract. And because it's Blockstream and because it's probably all KYC and things like that, it makes it uh, much easier for, say, large investment funds that have certain hoops they need to jump through, regulatory hoops to actually participate in mining and get exposure to hash rate without. Uh, any of the perceived risks associated with it. And then of course, there's just like the logistical or like operational risks of like, if you don't know much about mining and you try to leap into it and build big warehouses, source all the hardware, find all the expertise, it's something that takes an incredible amount of time. You'll probably experience a lot of hiccups and uh, you know fall down a lot along the way. So this is like a very simple, straightforward way for some of these entities to get exposure to mining without having to spend years learning the space, getting everything set up. Um, you know, if you have a partner like Blockstream to give you this exposure, they're already experts, they already mine, they already have hosting facilities and services. It's kind of just like a, a one-stop shop, you know, turnkey solution for them or whatever, whatever you'd call that. And um, so I guess my opinion on it is it's useful for very specific organizations to get Bitcoin mining exposure. 
Um, and yes, we'll see more stuff, stuff like it in the future. And um, yeah, very, very excited about some of the stuff Blockstream is doing moving forward in terms of Bitcoin mining. I think they'll become an increasingly bigger player moving forward and we'll see a lot more of them. Well, uh, I think the, I mean, we're running close ish to an hour. I don't know if the other guys have any questions left, but um, I feel like I know that if I run into a couple million and I decide I'm going to do mining, uh, Edward, you're the guy I'm going to come and have a chat. To, I think, yeah. <laughs> you don't need a couple million, I promise. Um, you can, uh, I'm sure you could, you could do it for less than a couple grand in Brazil. I know if you find a supplier somewhere in one of those neighboring countries, you can get a ant miner S9 for, you know, 400 bucks, 300 bucks or something. And, kind of have at it. And at the very least, you know, I, I guess in that part of the world, this won't be a problem. But what's also becoming increasingly popular for the old gen machines, like the S9, is to use them as space heaters, because they do produce a decent amount of heat. So people just put them on like the lowest settings with our software, uh, put the fans as low as possible, so they're quiet. And then effectively, even though you're not mining Bitcoin super profitably, the Bitcoin you do mine uh, is, um, you know, working against your electricity bill enough to where you can essentially acquire some sats and also heat your home. So not a, not a bad pet project if you're into it. Genius. Pretty genius. There's, there's gotta be like a way as well. Like, uh, I'm sure people have, I reckon in the future we'll have people making like uh, specific like, sort of devices designed to be heaters that happen to mine Bitcoin or like, have like a, you know, ima imagine if you can mine your Bitcoin on a mobile phone in the future or something, then it will be like a, you have like a, a heater setting or something where you turn it on and it, it heats your hands and it warms your hands whilst mining Bitcoin at the same time or something. <laughs> um, or even gamers can, you know, I, I can see it happening like that, but that'd be pretty cool. Um, there are some Bitcoin space heaters hitting the market, so keep an eye out for them. I will do exactly that. I did I did have one last question. Um, can you talk a little bit about Brains OS? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm always happy to speak about one of our magnificent products that we put so much time and effort into uh, developing. So where to begin? Um, the project started uh, some years ago now, and it was kind of in response to some of the stuff that had happened with some of the hardware manufacturers, specifically Covert, ASIC Boost, and Amplead. Um, these are some major issues because Amplead was basically, Bitmain had the ability to shut off machines remotely, which wasn't good, which they patched after it was made public. And then uh, there was some evidence that they were mining using covert ASIC boost um, uh, more profitably and like also not including it on the hardware they actually sold to some of their clients. Um, we also, when we published the first like major public version of Brains OS included over ASIC boost. And then of course they added it to their software afterwards. And so it kind of highlighted some issues in the industry with um, you know, you could buy these machines and they're yours. They're in your possession. You own them, you run them, but you don't necessarily dictate or control to any extent the software that was running on it. So in kind of the spirit of not your keys, not your coins, we kind of adopted not your firmware, not your miner. And then the open source project, uh, open source free version was plugging along for a while, supported on S9s and some of the, the Dragon Mints as well. And then what we did is there's basically a business opportunity for this as well. So we created Brains OS Plus, which is a version that has um, some of our auto-tuning algorithms, which uh, adjust the voltage and frequencies on a per chip basis on these hash boards. And the simplest way to put it is what it does is for every watt of energy consumed by the machine, it optimizes hash rate output. So on software straight out of the manufacturer, using an S9, for example, say it runs 1,200 watts and produces 13.5 terahash. Um, you know, if you were to run the machine on Brains OS Plus at 1,200 watts, it would produce, you know, over 14 terahash. Um, so you're getting more, you're mining more efficiently and more profit, profitably. That's like the main value proposition. And of course, there's all these other features like some of the ones I mentioned before uh, that were sort of born of learning more about what miners need and some of the challenges they faced. Uh, there's a preheat function because they don't do these hardware devices don't do so well in like sub zero climates. So, you know, if you're mining in Siberia, you're going to have issues starting up your machines in the winter because they're so cold. 
what it does is it heats up the boards enough to the point where you can start hashing, and, you know, start mining. So if it's negative 20, negative 30 degrees, you don't need to worry about if you're going to be able to turn on your machine or not, you'll be able to. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you're mining in like crazy hot environments, there's something referred to as dynamic power scaling, where you set a dangerous temperature range. And if the machine goes into that dangerous temperature range, it'll start stepping down the power in 100 watt intervals until it reaches a safe temperature range that you've predetermined, increasing the efficiency as it goes along. Because the less power a machine consumes with the software, uh, it can optimize for efficiency over raw hash rate output. So um, it kind of, that's you know started as a response to some of the major issues we saw in the mining industry in regards to people having no control whatsoever over the software that was running on their devices. And now it's sort of morphed over time into one of our main uh, business lines that people seem to love and um, is definitely my favorite product that we make. It's just super cool what you can do with the software. Um, and it's also really surprising that the manufacturers don't offer something like this for their, their clients because there is such a demand for it. Like you have to buy these things called fan spoofers and plug them into each individual machines if you do want to submerge them in oil and do immersion cooling. But you know, with third-party software like ours, you just toggle an option in the menu and you can sum, you can submerge the machines in oil, no problem. So it just makes everything simpler and um, for, for these larger operations that do have all these different operational needs because there is no one size fits all approach for mining. You know, some people are mining near the desert. Some people are mining in Siberia, as I said, some people need to immerse it because they're in Paraguay and there's all this dust. Uh, flying around, which is pretty uh, dangerous for the machines. You know, the three machine killers are uh, moisture, heat, and dust, probably. Uh, in terms of uh, if they have, they get on the chips, you're kind of screwed long term. So yeah, it's basically software that runs directly on the devices that allows you to operate in various forms of, uh, in various environments efficiently and profitably as well as gives you a little bit more control over the software that's actually running in your device. It is weird that they're, they're shipping without software like this, uh, like you said. Maybe we'll see uh, you know, someone like Bitmain trying to buy brains in the future. You never know. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, could, it, could be in the, it could be in the cards. <laughs> uh, uh, I, well, that would be flattering. I'm not sure we would ever, uh, we would ever go down that road. <laughs> entertain it, yeah. No, of course. I get you. Um, well, hey, um, Edward, appreciate you coming on. It's been a, a pleasure uh, to talk to you and I uh, appreciate uh, how I've learned a lot just from the conversation. So I'm sure people listening have as well. Um, so yeah, I appreciate it. Is there anything you wanted to say, like any final words like where people can find you and or anything like that or at all? Um, I guess I'll just finish with like a big thank you for having me on, Lawrence, Jerry, Ricardo. Um, this is the first time I'm meeting you guys. It was a fun conversation. Um, it's pretty high level because we had to cover a lot of big topics, but who knows, maybe in the future, we'll be able to dive into the nitty gritty specifics. And um, in terms of where to find me, uh, maybe just keep it in the beginning company focused, go to brains.com with two eyes. If you ever want to figure out what we do, um, all the different stuff we offer, B-R-A-I-I-N-S.com. Um, we have all our information there. It's a beautiful website, put a lot of work into it. So should ask, answer all your questions. And then for me personally, um, you know, if you're ever in Prague, you want to have a Pilsner or something, just hit me up on Twitter. Um, I'm at will hash number four coins, will hash four coins. And yeah, I'm pretty much always around to chat Bitcoin mining and I love this stuff. That's about it for me. Awesome. No, cheers. I'll, uh, I'll definitely make sure to Drop you a DM if I'm in Prague at any point. Uh, it's a nice place. So uh, I'll let you know. Good food, well priced, priced, very good beer. Um, well, yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks, for Joe, for, for joining us as well. Anyone listening, thank you so much. We hope you've appreciated it and uh, have an amazing uh, day, week, month, year. Uh, stay happy, love life, and uh, keep buying Bitcoin and take care. Cheers, gentlemen. Mm -hmm.